right. So I'd like to, again, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us this evening. Um, tonight's just going to be an overview of Naviance Family Connection um, for our 11th and 12th grade families. Um, really an opportunity just for the parents of juniors and seniors to get a picture of how their students are using the program. Uh, so without further ado, I'll switch over to the presentation. If you have any questions as we go along, um, you can put them into the chat. I will do my best to get to them and answer them. Or those of you here in person, of course, you can always feel free to raise a hand if you're unsure. Um, but again, just a, a quick understanding of what to expect. Oh, not a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Oh, okay. One, one moment. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, just one moment. We have a, we have a question. just had one question. So just an overview of what to expect from this evening. Uh, I'll look at what Naviance is, a basic understanding. I, I did do several of these Naviance overviews to parents last year in the different grade levels, as well as one overview to the parents of Willis Road. Um, but this is an opportunity for a quick refresh. Tonight we'll look specifically at the tools that the seniors are going to be using in their portion of the college application process as well as a look at the tools that our junior students will be using as we move into the winter and the spring and tools that they can also utilize now. Uh, an overview of the college visit scheduler, an overview of the college visit scheduler, the common application matching process, um, and also the application results reporting tool. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just lost video. Bear with me one moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're just having an issue on the in person. Uh, one moment. Okay, we're back up. Uh, and then an overview, of course, of how the juniors will be using the program as we move into the, uh, into the winter and spring. So first and foremost, what is Naviance? Naviance Family Connection is a comprehensive career and college tool. Our students utilize it to identify their areas of interest in the earlier grades, start to work out a plan for how those interests can be translated into future careers, as well as work on identifying what preparation pathways are then needed to help them to pursue those careers. Information such as their high school GPA, their AP and other college entrance exam scores are also easily accessible in the program. For our purposes tonight, we're gonna to review the portions again of Naviance that are applicable to the 11th and 12th graders. That's gonna be the search and application period. So firstly, we'll move into the seniors because at this point in time, they're kind of in the thick of the process. Um, when I took a peek at Naviance today, about 70% of our senior class had actually already at least applied to one college. Um, and our junior parents can kind of use this as a sneak peek as to what to expect for next year. So the college visit scheduler. Um, we're having college representatives visit our students here at Wheatley. This year, they are 100% virtual, those visits. We hope to move back to in-person visits very soon. Um, but from there again, but from there again, um, our students have to schedule those visits with the admissions rep through Navia. We do ask that our seniors sign up for those visits ahead of time in order to ensure that appropriate space is provided for. And it allows our students to then engage in the virtual meeting with minimum distraction. Um, one of our most recent visits, we were so excited, had about 30 students 
um, who had signed up, which is so larger than the capacity of any of our classrooms this year, we were able to fortunately work with Dr. Clapper to move them into the auditorium um, so the students could log on socially distance using their earbuds, again, engage in the, in the conversation with the admission threat. Um, and just to look at once the students sign up ahead of time, they log into Naviance. When students log into Naviance, this is the screen that they'll see. And if they go to the colleges tab, the college visits link lists all of the upcoming visits that we have headed to weekly. The date and the time, as well as the virtual visits link. And simply clicking register now enables the student to register for that visit. So the guidance counselor in charge of it can reach out to them, not just share the virtual link with them again, but also make sure that they know what room they're going to be meeting in. By default, all of our meetings are set for the guidance office so the students report to the same location. However, from there, they meet with the counselor coordinating the visit after receiving an email that looks something like this, giving them a sense as to, again, a reminder of the period and the time, the location there to meet, a reminder to bring their Chromebook, as well as a link to the visit, uh, the, the virtual visit. The students are able to move on from there. We've had a lot of success. The students have been able to connect with a lot of different college reps. We've also fortunately been able to welcome in a number of different college reps from universities that may not previously have been able to make it due to travel. Um, so we have been very happy to be able to offer that up to our seniors again this year as well. In addition, our seniors are using Naviance to share their application documents with the colleges that they apply to as well. And one of the ways that they're doing this is by matching their common application to Naviance. So for parents who may not be aware, especially our junior parents, the common application is the platform through which the majority of students are going to apply to colleges. They'll create a separate account for that. Naviance works together in concert with common application in order to enable students to match those seamlessly and enable them to show us in guidance which schools that they've applied to using the common app. So a senior, again, from Naviance, their landing page looks like this. When they go to the colleges tab and select colleges I'm applying to, if they haven't yet matched Naviance, right up here at the top, they're gonna to have this red bar encouraging them to make sure they match their common app account. So click match accounts. It'll take them to the common application homepage. And from there, they'll log into their account and it'll match their common application to Naviance. Doing that will enable the students to populate their colleges they're applying to list with the schools that they've completed the common app for, which enables the counselors to send their supporting documents, their high school transcripts, their counselor recommendation, other letters of recommendation. So it's a key step in that process. Um, so it's one thing, again, one way in which our seniors are able to stay ahead of the game that automatically populates those colleges for them. In addition, schools that don't work well with the Common App, um, every once in a while a child will apply direct to an institution. A school is not supported on Common App, you may have a coalition application school. Naviance does enable the counselors to send digital documents to those schools as well. It may require a manual add to the colleges I'm applying to list by, on the part of the counselor, but that opportunity is still there in that functionality. And then finally, for our seniors, the final way that they'll be utilizing Naviance this year is reporting their application results and filling out their senior exit survey. Um, many of the senior parents here likely attended the junior parent Naviance information session last year, so they got to look at those scattergrams. Um, we will get into those a little bit later here, too. But one of the ways in which we populate the data, the weekly student-specific data on those scattergrams, is through the exit survey and the application results reporting. And it's just as simple as students checking in with their guidance counselor as the good news comes in um, and letting us know just what the outcome of those college applications is. In addition, students have the opportunity to log into Naviance and from this screen, update the, the outcomes of the, uh, of the college application. So they can select the school, 
I'm making an indicate here for the counselor. It can indicate that their application has been submitted. And from here, but from, it's actually not visible on my screen, but they'll have that option to select the, the outcome. So they can choose waitlisted, uh, admitted, deferred, with the update take that there. We don't expect the students to do that. They're not under no obligation to. They can fill their counselor in on it. The counselor can update that. And of course, at the end of the year, just before they graduate, we're going to ask the students under the About Me and Surveys from their school tab to select the post-grad survey. And here they'll indicate what their final plan is, the college to which they plan to attend, if they're going to enter the military, or any other plan. They can update from here. Again, the outcomes, if they didn't get a chance to do it during the year, provide us with all that good information and hit save and finish. This serves two purposes. The first, as I mentioned, it allows us to update our application data so we can make sure that we have accurate information for the students who come after our graduating seniors so they have the best possible understanding of what the requirements are for the schools to which they plan to apply. But in addition, when, when seniors graduate, we do send their final transcripts to the colleges to which they decided to attend. Entering in their attending college here enables the guidance department to send that directly to the institution they plan um, to report to. So it's, it's a very important step in the process. So for our seniors, again, really at, at this stage, uh, a lot of what they're a lot of what they're going to be doing is making sure that they're finalized that they're connecting their common app if they hadn't already done so so their supporting documents can be sent and then it's really just updating their guidance counselors on the outcome of their different applications and moving on to the juniors the the tools for our juniors as they apply to college the career search tool is really where, where we'll start um, Naviance has a battery of career assessments. We've been expanding our use of them in the district um, to make sure that our students, even starting from a young age, have the opportunities to start to get a sense as to what it is they'd like to do uh, when it comes to life after high school. Um, one of the things that I have found in many of the other districts I've worked in, as well as in speaking with many of my counterparts in other districts, is this piece of Naviance really does tend to be underutilized. Uh, we found that a lot of what districts and students focus on Naviance for is that college application, sending their data, sending their information, as well as researching colleges. But the career search for me is an important part. Um, you know, I, I always try to let students know we focus so much on colleges and outcomes, but really college is a, is a means that gets you to an outcome. You know, it's, it's you have the career in mind, that pathway that you'd like to follow. College is that step on the road to that outcome. So it's identifying first where it is you'd like to go and then picking the college that'll help you to get there. For that reason, we're putting our emphasis a lot more on the career search pieces in Naviance as well. One of the ones our 11th graders actually all did uh, in class with their guidance counselors last year was the career interest profiler as 10th graders. So uh, during the, through the career interest profiler, the students review a series of tasks that they could perform as a part of various jobs and they indicate whether it's something they'd like to do, they dislike doing, or maybe they're unsure about it, in which case they indicate that. A sample question pulled right from the career interest profiler is developing a more accurate way to predict the weather. And students provide that. Once the profiler completes, uh, students receive data that provides them a picture of what career choices fit the interests that they've expressed. So we'll just take a walk over to Naviance right now, over to the self-discovery tab, which is new. And here students can see all of the different career assessments that they've completed throughout high school. The career interest profiler for our sample student is right here. And once they've finished it, view results, Naviance will actually provide them with a report, a summary of what all of those pieces and, and those responses mean. So they'll get a sense breaking down the Holland traits of enterprise and conventional, social and realistic. The students receive their general score in that area with their top scores, making their way down to their lower scores, and a brief explanation of what those traits mean. So as an example, the demo student, which happens to be me, scored rather high in the enterprising area. This individual likes to lead and persuade people. They like to sell things an idea. 
They generally avoid activities that require careful observation and scientific and analytical thinking. That's fairly accurate. So from there, the student can click on view careers and get a, get a listing of careers that lend themselves to that personality type. Once they, re they can scroll through and review them, or we encourage the students as well to look at the other areas as well. Just because you scored rather high in one area, we always ask them to bear in mind the difference in this particular case was one point. So conventional careers are worth a look for this, this student as well. Down below, they get the complete results. This is beyond the synopsis, beyond the thumbnail sketch, the overall explanation of, again, what these types of areas tend to look like for students and, and, and what the traits are. And it goes down into some of the ones that they may have scored low in as well. And then the career recommendations also, where they can see some of those top jobs that fit all of the different areas. If we go into see all career recommendations. Here at a younger age, our, our sophomores, we encourage them to explore it as students look and move into the beginning of junior year. We're encouraging them to continue to review these results as well, just to continue to see what types of careers might fit their interests. And as they start to find them and identify them, the students are able to click on the titles of the careers for a deeper dive into what that career looks like. So they get an overview with a thumbnail sketch of what the occupation entail, the general education requirements for the occupation they're reviewing. So in this case, they're a finance manager, a four-year college uh, education, the average national salary, and we'll, we'll go back to that in a minute, and then the clusters and pathways, which for the older students will not factor in as much. We do use the cluster finder tool for our younger students. Um, we did explore that with, I believe it was our ninth graders last year. So they'll have a little bit of sense of, again, it's a more general area. And then it's just a brief breakdown of what folks in this area do. Now, if they scroll down further in the overview, they do get to the wages area. I encourage the students to shy away from that in the beginning, of course, it's the place they always want to go to. I'll circle back to that in a minute. And again, back to those college traits, related majors and related careers. But as students are exploring the careers, we ask them to look at the skills and experience tab first. It gives a breakdown of the knowledge that individuals tend to need to have to be successful in a given career, the skills that are most important to find success in the career they're looking at, different abilities, and what I've always utilized this tool for as a guidance counselor, the TAMP. And what I've always recommended, especially to those students who are still exploring career paths, take the task list, look at the general tasks that are laid out for a particular job. And as you read through it, for yourself, mark down if a task is a plus or a minus. If your pluses outweigh your minuses, chances are this is a strong career field that you might have interest in. Contrarily, if the minuses outweigh the plus, pluses, you may want to move away from it. But take careful uh, note of those pluses, and in some cases, the minuses. There may be certain pieces of a job that you really like, and maybe the minuses are outweighing the pluses for you. You say, oh, you know what? I, Overseeing the flow of cash or financial instruments. I, I like the idea of being able to monitor how the money moves in a, in a company. And maybe there's other pieces to this that I don't love, but is there something related to this that I could do? In that instance, the student can navigate back to the overview, and down at the bottom, there's related careers. And this is where they can again identify things that maybe, while not exactly the same, have some similarities where they may find that plus and some of those minuses that they felt they wanted to avoid float away. Clicking on that job then brings them to a similar over so they can begin to evaluate. If the student's reviewing those tasks and they decide that this is something that they're interested in, then there's a few different things they can do. At this point, I've always told students, now it's okay for you to go back to that wages tab because you want to make sure that if you're going to do something, you can also support yourself on it. And it'll give you a breakdown of, as we looked before, not just the national salary, but now we also also give you a breakdown of wages in these different careers by state. So here, as we hover over this finance manager in New York, the average salary is 190000 Now, one change that Naviance has made in the last year, which I really like, they've always had this wage tab to explain what the different careers do. And they've always broken it down by state. But now further, they also break it down within your state by region. So students are able to look at New York City 
what the low median and average, uh, low median and high salary is, or in Nassau and Suffolk County. So if the student plans to stay close to home, they again get that sense of what the income breakdown for that job is, right where they are, as well as then, of course, the different areas of the state. If the student is considering relocating, or, and I've said this to students before, you know, Mr. O'Brien, my family's actually going to be moving next year. Um, you know, I, I still want to use now the answer the time I have, but this isn't helping me. From the pull down, they can select any of the other 50 states and get a similar breakdown. So if they're moving to Connecticut, and I think Connecticut would be New York, if they really back. But just as an example, they can again see that breakdown anywhere. So this is a nice opportunity for students if they're going to relocate to get a sense of what the salary would be in the place that they're looking to relocate to. Um, if they choose to go to Guam, they can have a great idea as to what a finance manager in Guam would say. But this again allows them to get a sense of the fiscal reasonability of their of their career choice, and they can start to picture, okay, this is what I might be able to expect to make well, from the low end to the medium end. Um, is this something that I could see myself doing? Once they have that sense, and maybe the student, after looking at a bunch of different careers, and that's another thing that we advise the students to do is look at as many different careers as they can possible. But as they start to feel like, you know what, I, I think I'm getting more and more sold on this, this might be something I'd like to do. Going back to the overview, scrolling down, they can get the related college majors. And this is something that you popped into some of these presentations that I did last year. Naviance was in the process of making a change over from the old format to the new one. Um, and we were one of the early adopters of the new format. And one of the things I complained about I think it was in the 10th grade <laughs> overview, was that these were not clickable as they had been. As you can see, they now are clickable. So a student can click on finance, as an example, which is a major that that career would typically require for preparation. And Naviance will then bring them to an overview of all of the schools in Naviance, which will be the majority of the schools in the country that have that specific major. And they can scroll through and start to then research those schools. So in the earlier grades, they can get a sense of what some of the preparation steps they might take would be to be able to get into it. For our juniors, it's really more in that final plan of starting to collect, starting to conform their early list, as well as their preparation. So this student might click American University, and then once the screen loads, they'll have kind of a quick bird's eye view of American University and what to expect. Just on their dashboard, the overview, they can get the average net price they can adjust by family income so they can get a sense of what the sticker price could be expected to be. The four-year or six-year graduation rate at that institution, the average acceptance rate nationally for that school, college overlaps. These are the other colleges that students who apply to American also apply to. So clicking here, oh, hey, you know, American is a school I might be interested in. Students that tend to apply to American, where else do they apply? Clicking that link will give them the common college overlap. And then also the deadline. So they can start to plan for senior year and begin to get a sense of, okay, if I want to apply to this school, the early decision deadline is November 15th. If I decide to take that route, I need to make sure I have my ducks at row. And then each of those birds I view categories in other tabs are broken down further. So in studies, you can get a sense of what the student faculty ratio is, very high student retention when it comes to American the top areas of study, the top majors at the school, but also all of the majors and minors offered in the school. Student life, again, gives you the campus pride index, the size of the school, the nearest major city, the distance from us at Wheatley here, so 224 miles away, and the percent of students that live on campus, as well as a breakdown of the student body, ethnicity, gender, age. It, it drills down so students can get a picture of what the campus looks like. And then finally, the admissions tab. This is what gives students not just an idea of what their timetable should be um, and the overall competitiveness nationwide, they can also get a breakdown weekly specific as to what they can expect. So Wheatley's high school application history is here for them. So as of last year, nine students applied with six accepted. The year prior, eight applied and six were accepted. There seems to be some data missing for 2019, but six applied, five accepted. And then scrolling down to the scattergrams, here, students can actually plot themselves on a graph of the students who've applied historically to American going back, I believe we, these data goes back to 2009, but I'd have to confirm that, to get a sense of where they stand. So the average 
except for GPA. Stands at a 3.77. And the average SAT score stands at a 13. All of the green checks represent students from Wheatley, completely anonymous, who have been accepted. When you hover over any of the check marks, it'll give you accepted RD, that means regular decision. So the student applies regular decision, they didn't utilize early decision, and were accepted. That anonymous student's average, that anonymous student's SAT score, and that anonymous student's GPA. Students in the green boxes, zoom in a little bit, also gives you their information. Looking down at the legend, that's a student that applied early action. Got students in the circle as well, that student applied early decision. And then, of course, our X is the students that were denied. So it gives the student a sense of where it is they happen to fall on the chart. Our demo account is missing, I believe, SAT scores, so you can't see it. But when the students log in, if you look in the legend, there's that little blue icon. They'll fall wherever on the graph it plots them. So they have a very quick bird's eye view way to identify uh, how it is they compare to those other students. And then, of course, I always recommend students take a look at this, the costs tab, just for mom and dad's sake. Get a sense if you're going to apply to the school as to what the costs might be, um, what it is that you might plan to find, not just in tuition, but if you look here, the average annual room and board cost as well is added to that tuition. And again, it does adjust for family income, so it does enable students to get at least a sense of, based on what my family earns, what I might expect to have. We recommend that students utilize this again as they're formulating their college list over the spring and summer of junior year um, to begin to identify their timetables, again, what they expect to need um, when it comes to their applications. And that in that way, the career search tool, the career interest profiler, helps them make the connection between their interests, the careers that fit those interests, and then beyond it, how we can utilize that and apply it to research schools that might fit our, our needs. Um, and the college search tool. So I just showed you a lot of the functionality of Naviance and how it kind of gets us to identify tools that might be appropriate applications. But you might be saying, well, Mr. O'Brien, that's great if I want to know what every school in the United States that has finance looks like. But what if my child wants to kind of start to research it from a more targeted way? From there, and starting from the home page, students would go to their colleges tab under the advanced college search, Naviance allows them to plug in the criteria and we'll go through a sample just so everyone can get a sense both at home and in person, but of, of what that looks like. So say I'm the student who now I, I completed that career interest profile as a 10th grader. I poked around a little bit. I'm getting a sense of some of the schools that might have the majors I'm interested in and what they look like, but I don't want to travel too far from home. You know, for me, DC isn't too far, but it's not necessarily where I want to go. What are some schools that are more in the area I, I, I'm interested in? I have family in New England. So from here, you would select, you could do a two-year or four-year school, public versus a private college, surroundings of the campus, whether it's a co-ed campus or not. Um, what I've always recommended to students, especially as they do these early searches, is keep them fairly numeric. You'll narrow down the results too much too fast by entering into campus surroundings as an example for public versus private. But here, this is a student that will assume with a strong GPA to say they're going to look for four year schools. Clicking next, you can search either by distance, so a certain number of miles from Old Westbury specifically, or you can search by location. So again, we indicated that this student has family in New England. We'll look at Connecticut, Mass, Rhode Island. New York, we'll look at Boise, and we'll take a look at Pennsylvania. From there again, we can hit next. Again, I recommend that as students go through, you can do as many searches as you want. You can save as many searches as you want. Early ones should stay fairly generic. Again, they can enter in campus size. So once the student reaches a point in their process where they have a sense of, you know, I'd like smaller classes, or I don't want a campus that feels too overwhelming. They can mark off a smaller student body. Um, they can also get a sense of diversity on campus by filling this in. Percentage of students who come into the campus from out of state, the male to female ratio. They can look at all those. 
for our purposes tonight, we're going to keep those to no preference. Now, these statistics are nationally reported. So when we look for Florida American, we can see the percentage accepted. This will filter schools by how selective they are. Obviously, the lower the percentage, the more selective a campus is. And therefore, it's an indicator that it's likely a more tricky admin. Early on, again, I recommend students leave this be, but it is certainly something in, in later searches where they're trying to find schools that may be more of a reach. Um, or if they want to find schools that might be a little bit more safe, or the likely admit, um, they can certainly utilize that feature. Again, intercollegiate sports, if they want to identify if a school is Division I or two, if they want to get a sense as to what sports might be available for them on campus, um, they can select all that here. This is especially helpful for our student athletes. And then finally, the most important tab outside of the region, the major. So from here, students can again select Select what they can type. I don't know what I'm going to type. So, so, accounting and finance, accounting and business management, control, so the glitch on the screen is not allowing you to type, but there is a type feature that goes in this bar right here when this person is. Oh, wait. Here it is, it's different. Again, that particular student wants to see those finance schools, you can add it down below, hit next. Now again, it allows you to break it down by cost. So that's really important for parents, I'm the father of a senior myself, you want to get a sense as to what the in-state tuition might be, the tuition for out-of-state students, and any special programs they might have. If you have a student who's interested in service in the armed forces, they might like to go on our OTC route. You might want to make sure there's a certain organization or activity on campus. You have the ability to refine that here. And then finally, you can hit view matches. And we've got 168 matches in Naviance now, so we've narrowed it down from that earlier list that fit our criteria. So these are four-year schools in the states we selected with general finance as a major. And now from here, again, I have that more targeted list that I can start to review. Can then click on the schools from there. They load. Again, I do the same research that I was able to do from the more general college search. And if I decide as I'm reviewing the school that, you know what, Binghamton might be a school I'm interested in, I can click on the hard icon next to the school. And then the next time I log into Naviance, rather than having to type it in in the college search bar all the time, under colleges, Binghamton will appear under colleges I'm thinking about. I can pull up a listing of the deadlines. So as I'm making my planning, oh, Binghamton has an early action opportunity for November 1st. In my junior conference, the guidance counselor said early action gives me a slight advantage in terms of applications. I'm going to make that my target date for when I'm going to have my application in. And you're able to send the quarter. It also allows you to, again, quickly reference the information you can back to them. So we're definitely recommending that our juniors, as we move more into the spring, um, begin to finish utilizing their review of the career and profiler results, that they start to attempt some of these searches um, and then move forward from there. And then finally, the letter, well, not finally, <laughs> but letter of recommendation request. So we're now moving into the spring of junior year. The students are starting to narrow down their college lists. They're having their junior conference with their guidance counselor. Um, one of the key pieces of their application is letters of recommendation. I'm going to need those teachers to speak on my behalf, to speak to what a great student I am. Um, you know, what is it that I need to do to make sure I have that in place? So we weekly ask all of our students to connect with the teachers that they'd like to be a recommended in person first um, to have that conversation. Once the teacher agrees to write the student's letter of recommendation, we do ask them the students make a formal request to not know. And the way they do that, and I promise to all of you here, we will go over this with the students again, but just so you can see how they'll be utilizing it. Right in the ambiance under the balcony, oh, no, I'm sorry, I lied. Under colleges, the letter of recommendation list allows the students to add a request, identify a teacher, select Dr. Clapper. 
we ask that they make a general request. Um, the reason for this um, is twofold. Number one, if the child requests the teacher for a specific school, we're only able to send the letter to that school, whereas they may decide they want them for others. The other piece is Naviance, and I don't want to bore you too much behind the scenes, but Naviance has recently this year made a change um, where once a common application school is applied to and the council sends the documents to one, it'll automatically send them to all, including the teacher letter, if a specific school is requested. Making it a general request will enable the counselor to have control over that. The students can pick and choose with us. I'd like this teacher to be sent to this school, that teacher to be sent to that school. It prevents it from being sent. So unfortunately, we don't have the ability to block specific requests from being made at all. But we will be telling the students they should make sure that any letter of recommendation request they make is a general request. It can include a note, which I always indicate is, you know, thank you so much for agreeing to write my letter. I really appreciate everything you've done. Since Dr. Clapper will get this, I'll tell her to feel free to ignore it so that she doesn't get confused. And then that's there. So then it'll appear on the teacher's list of recommendations, reminding them that next fall, when they write the letters or over the summer, they have to put together a recommendation. In addition, the guidance council will then be able to review that on their end as well and just see whose letter they should be expecting to come in. Now, in addition, once the juniors make those requests to recommenders, we also ask them to fill out the junior bridge. That's where they're going to input a lot of the information that they want to make sure they're recommending for the teachers and the counselors to know. So from there, the surveys from the school, we'll select the brag sheet. And they'll answer all the questions that they see here. What I recommend the students do typically is save this in a Google Doc and then paste it in when they're done. It doesn't allow them. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. The brag sheet will allow them to hit update and it'll save it as it is in progress. I found over the, over the course of the last few years that a lot of the students, because of Google Docs, are a little spoiled and they're used to it just saving their work and being able to move on. They forget to hit that update. They didn't know the pain of Microsoft Word like many of us did. And if you didn't save, you were out of luck. Um, but the other reason is once they hit update once, regardless of whether or not all the questions are finished, on our end, it will show us complete. And so many, many times the counselors, if a child forgets to finish their grant, will follow back up with them and let them know, hey, make sure you have this ready so we can get your recommendations done, make sure this is there. If the child maybe just gets to question seven on this list and then hits update plans to go back to it and then it slips their mind when we run a report and guidance it will show it's done and we won't realize we have to tap that child on the shoulder so for that reason i recommend they finish it separately but they do have the opportunity to update it to continue to come back my recommendation is that the students have it finished before the end of their junior year um, before they go away for summer vacation if they don't have a chance with all of the AP exams now we're turning regents exams, SATs, and ACTs that they have going if they do it over the summer. That's fine too. It still gives the recommended plan. Um, but the earlier they know about it, the more opportunities they have to complete it. So I felt it important to make sure. And then finally, in addition to, of course, requesting the letters of recommendation in Naviance and completing the grad sheet in Naviance, we're recommending our students use the resume builder tool as well. Again, this is something the counselors and I are trying to. Um, is to put in the bug of our students here is to complete this regularly. So in Naviance, again, under About Me, students have access to the resume builder tool. Many of the colleges will ask for a listing, both on the common app of the extracurriculars uh, students have participated in, as well as in some cases a separate activity building. If not, the resume is also useful for teachers completing recommendation forms as they want to speak to maybe key points. They can't remember every aspect of what the child's done. Having that resume for reference is helpful as well. Our recommendation is starting in eighth grade. Students log into Naviance and just begin to keep a, a running list. It's very quick of what it is they've been doing. So this demo account, I have a resume started, but just to give you a sense, student hits the plus sign. 
or they have something they'd like to add. As an example, they can add a new section, skills, and they can type in proficient in Microsoft Word. Grades in which they happen to develop that skill and refine it, different dates and applicable information they can click add, and it'll be added to the resume. Or for areas that they have already, as an example, this student already has an extracurricular grant. The curricular activities tab. They participated in vintage in grades nine and ten. Now they're in grade eleven. They want to make sure to update the resume because they already added this section in the ninth grade year. It's as simple as logging in. Now clicking the eleven. Hit and save. But they'll click add and it'll update the resume. And the students, of course, can do this and quickly update all their activities. One of the things that school counselor I really did find was that the thing that gave students the greatest piece of trouble was sitting down at the beginning of 12th grade and the very end of junior year and suddenly racking their brains to remember, did this then? Did I start this in the ninth grade or the tenth? Did I start this year? Having that running list takes the stress, takes the pressure away, and it has it there available for them. In addition, many scholarships that students will apply for, in addition to an essay, will ask for a copy of the resume. Rather than having to rush to put one together, the students have it to reflect on right here. And they can put them in easily, click print, export, and then using the layout, it breaks it down for them right there. They can hit print and the resume is ready to go. If they decide to apply for a job, and maybe that job says, hey, it's a high schooler, but we want them to get into the habit of having a resume, they might ask them for it. It simplifies their life on many levels. So that's one last piece that we are asking our juniors to bear in mind with these apps is using the resume builder tool. So we have the college search feature, the resume builder tool, and the letter of recommendation request. So those are really the pieces of Naviance that we're recommending students at 11th grade utilize the most heavily and the most regularly. And that really brings us to the end of the different tools and, and functions that juniors and seniors are going to be using. Just some general housekeeping. The link to Naviance is right here. It is also posted on the guidance department website. Um, if you'd like a parent account, and parent accounts really do allow you to see, um, as you saw there, that bird's eye view of the uh, assessments overview that I was able to see for the demo. Parents can see that for their children as well. You're also able to log into your child's account also. Some parents prefer their own. Completing the form that I've linked here will enable you to do that. This presentation will be linked on the guidance department website tomorrow morning. That link will be clickable, and you can always fill that out. Um, just a few reminders. Seniors are encouraged to complete their applications by the end of the month if they haven't already done so. Um, there is still time, and certainly many schools will have later deadlines, um, but our recommendation is always our students finish their application before they go away for Thanksgiving break. Um, in addition, I did just send it out this morning, but our 10th and 11th grade practice ACT is going to be this Saturday, December 11th at 8 a.m., I did share a letter out this morning on Parent Square with the information. I shared the same letter with the students. In addition, the letter and the registration link are also on the guidance department website. If your child would like to take the, the full length practice ACT, uh, the cost is, I believe, $15, um, but it is in the letter and the registration link is posted right on the guidance department website. And then finally, for again, the junior families, junior college planning that is scheduled for January 13th at 7 p.m. More information about that will follow soon. That's really just an informational overview for our juniors and their families, um, just to give them an idea as to what to expect from the college process. Um, with that, I will open it up to questions. I know I did see a few in the chat uh, about presenting for a moment. Okay, any students that don't remember their login uh, guidance, actually, I do believe they have the ability um, when they log in to click forgot password. The login will be their school district email and the password, if they can't remember it, there is a forgot password link. If for some reason that doesn't work, children can report to the guidance council. The guidance council does have the ability uh, to reset passwords for them. So students can do that as well. And then our GPA is reported on the scatter plot the weighted or unweighted GPA. That should be the weighted GPA. Um, I do believe students may even have the ability to toggle, um, but that should be the weighted GPA that's reported there. 
Um, and if any of you did stop in a little bit later or just get a chance to join us, you know that the presentation has been recorded. I will be uploading it to the Guidance Department YouTube channel tomorrow morning and sharing it out uh, via link as well. So if you were here the entire time and just want to have the opportunity to review everything we spoke about, that certainly will be an available option. Um, in addition, on that website, um, or the, I should say the YouTube channel, we do have all the other parent uh, information sessions that I did do last year for Navion, so you can review those if you need to as well. Um, any other questions about Navion? Are we utilizing it? Any the folks in the live audience? Folks at home can't see it, but there's a huge crowd here. <laughs> no questions. Any other questions in the chat? Absolutely. So the guidance counselors did push into uh, the ninth, 10th, and 11th grade classes last year to do these specific activities and give overviews. We do plan then to revisit those grade levels as well as the eighth grade this year to both do different assessments with them as well as to give the students an overarching understanding of what to expect in on the The juniors will get a little bit more attention. Um, we'll, we will have the junior kickoff, which allows the students with the guidance counselors to get not just a bird's eye view of the college process, but as to how they can expect to utilize Naviance as well. And then the younger grades, we then will get that introduction into the different career assessments and counseling support. Um, and Mr. Stander and Ms. Ross and the Florida Trove are working on expanding Naviance in the tools of the so yes, they will. Um, the question, just for the folks at home, was will our uh, students also get an overview similar to this as to how they can utilize Navion? The answer to that is yes. Any other questions? Okay. Well, again, I, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, both in person and online this evening. Um, if you do have any questions that come up, please never hesitate. Reach out to your child's counselor. Reach out to me, and have a great evening. Everybody be safe.